Welcome. Welcome to the Monday Thursday communion and tenebrae service of the Ewing Covenant Presbyterian Church. We are glad that you have chosen to join us in this time of worship on this holy night. The service will consist really of two parts. The first will be the celebration of communion, remembrance of the Last Supper, and then we will move to the tenebrae portion of the service. And through that, that time, we will hear Matthew's telling of the story of Jesus' passion from the beginning with the Last Supper through his death. We hope that you will dim your lights in your room, that you might join with us in the darkening of this night. But welcome. We're glad that you have come to join us in worship this night. And as we begin, as we have in this whole pandemic time, we light our unity candle. We light this candle to remind us of Christ's presence with us in the midst of this pandemic, connect, connecting us in all our separate places, strengthening all those serving the front lines of this pandemic, encouraging all who have been laid low. We now come and worship our Lord. I invite you to join with me in a responsive call to worship as the words will appear for on your screen. Tonight, we face ourselves. We face the pilot, the Herod, and the crowd in all of us. We want to have the conviction of Peter, but we also know we turn away. It is a hard night, 
there are harsh realities, but we know that we must journey through this story to fully appreciate the gift of new life that comes on Sunday. Even though we are separate, even though we sit in our home worship spaces, we are together facing our humanity and embracing the depth and breadth of sacrificial love. Let us worship God together and let us join in singing our opening hymn, What Wondrous Love Is This? Friends, let us pray together. Holy God, we come to worship in the gathering shadows of Jesus' suffering and death. We come with his friends, the men and women who have followed him in every place and every generation, to live once again this story of service and betrayal, of weakness and of courage. We come to witness your love in action, be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our storytelling and remembering this night begins with the story of Jesus' Last Supper. Here, these words from the Gospel of Matthew that tell of this meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. Remember this story from Matthew 26, verses 17 through 30. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, he took his place with the 12, 
And while they were eating, he said to them, truly I tell you, one of you will betray me. And they became greatly distressed and began to say to him one after another, surely not I, Lord. He answered, the one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The son of man goes as it is written of him, but woe to that one of whom the son of man is betrayed. It would have been better for that one not to have been born. Judas, who betrayed him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi. He replied, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. For this is the blood, my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. We begin the night here at the table of our Lord, hearing the story of that meal, the Passover meal that Jesus shared with his disciples. In the midst of that traditional meal, that meal that marked all of those present as Jews, as followers of Abraham, descendants of Abraham, descendants of Moses, and in that great tradition, in the midst of that came these words of Jesus, the words of the breaking of the bread of the sharing of the cup, but also the recognition of what would be happening that night and in the days ahead. This meal, this last supper, is our preparation for the events that follow and for the story that we will hear later. But now let us join together in this meal and let us prepare for that meal further by listening to pay P.A. Jesu, and let us worship.
My friends, come to this table not because you must, but because you may. Come not because you are righteous, but because you stand in need of the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come not to express an opinion, but to seek a presence. Come not because you lay claim to God's love, but because you stand in it, in need of his mercy. Of his mercy. Come because Christ invites you, opens the way for you. Come, eat this bread, drink this cup, that you may be nourished by God's eternal love and life. We come because Christ bids us come. We come to receive Christ's gift freely given. We come to join our lives to him. In company with Christians of every time and place, we come to declare our allegiance and to strengthen our souls in the knowledge of his love. Please join with me in prayer. Great God, our creator, you have made possible for us a new and living way in Jesus Christ, our Lord. We remember and celebrate his last supper with the disciples and the offering of himself on the cross for us. As he took bread and gave thanks, so we take this bread and this cup and give thanks. Grant us your, pressing, your presence in this sacrament we celebrate that we may be truly joined to Christ our Lord, that his life may be in us, and that when this physical life is over, we may break bread in your eternal kingdom. We offer ourselves to you, and with the church in all generations, thank you for your love in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. On the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after giving thanks, he broke it, saying, This is my body, which is broken for you. As often as you eat of it, do so in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup. And he said, This is the new covenant, sealed in my blood, shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you eat the spread and you drink this cup, you proclaim the saving death of our risen Lord until he comes again. Friends, the gifts of God for the people of God. Take and eat. Take and drink. And let us join our hearts together in prayer. Holy God, we come to worship in the gathering of shadows of Jesus' suffering and death. We come with his friends, the men and women who have followed him, followed in every place and generation, to live once again this story of service and betrayal, of weakness and courage. We come to be witnesses to your love in action. Be with us, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. And friends, now we come to the Tenebrae service, or the service of shadows. Traditionally, this service on Monday, Thursday, or Good Friday tells the story of Jesus' passing, passion, his suffering, his death. In 
passages read. After each one, a candle is extinguished, reminding us of the shadow of death that is coming upon Christ, reminding us of the shadows of evil that are part of our life. The room darkens, as does our hope. And then at the end, we know that the darkness does not overcome the light. At the end of our service, we will leave in silence, but we will leave in the confidence that once again, the light is not overcome. And in that reality, we find hope for our times, hope for our future, hope for all our days and years. Listen now to the story of Christ's passion. First lesson from Matthew's Gospel at chapter 26, verses 30 through 46. When they had sung the hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, You will all become deserters because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter said to him, though all become deserters because of you, I will never desert you. Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you this very night before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. Peter said to him, even though I must die with you, I will not deny you. And so said all the disciples. Then Jesus went with them to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to his disciples, sit here while I go over there and pray. 
he took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee and began to be grieved and agitated. Then he said to them, I am deeply grieved even to death. Remain here and stay awake with me. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed, my father, if it is possible, let this cup pass from me, yet not what I want, but what you want. Then he came to the disciples and found them sleeping. And he said to Peter, so could you not stay awake with me one hour? Stay awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Again, he went away for the second time and prayed, my father, if this cannot pass unless I drink it, your will be done. And again, he came and found them sleeping for their eyes were heavy. So leaving them again, he went away and prayed for the third time, saying the same words. Then he came to the disciples and he said to them, are you still sleeping and taking your rest? See, the hour is at hand and the son of man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. The shadows lengthen. Lord, have mercy upon us. The second lesson, Jesus is betrayed. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve arrived with him, was a large crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now the betrayer had given them a sign saying, the one I will kiss is the man, arrest him. At once he came up to Jesus and said, greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus said to him, friend, do you want, do you are here to do? Then they came and laid hands on Jesus and arrested him. Suddenly one of those with Jesus put his hands on the, his sword, drew it, and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to him, put your sword back into its place, for all who take the sword will perish by the sword. Do you think that I cannot appeal to my father, and he will at once send me more than 12 legions of the angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled, which say it must happen in this way? At the hour, Jesus said to crowds, have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as there thought the I were a bandit? Day after day, I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But, but all this has taken place so that the scriptures of the prophets. prophets be fulfilled. Then all the disciples desert him and flee. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Shadows lengthen, Christ have mercy upon us.
Third lesson, Jesus before the high priest. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, in whose house the scribes and the elders had gathered. But Peter was following him at a distance, as far as the courtyard of the high priest, and going inside, he sat with the guards in order to see how this would end. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for false testimony against Jesus so that they may put him to death. But they found none, though many false witnesses came forward. At last, two came forward and said, This fellow said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and build it in three days. The high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But Jesus was silent. Then the high priest said to him, I put you under oath before the living God. Tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has blasphemed. Blasphemed. Why do we still need witnesses? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your verdict? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spat in his face and struck him. And some slapped him, saying, Prophecy to us, you Messiah. Who is it that struck you? Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. The shadows lengthen. Christ, have mercy upon us. The fourth lesson, Jesus is denied. Now Peter was sitting out in the courtyard. A servant girl came to him and said, You also were with Jesus in the Galilee, but... He denied it before all of the them, saying, I do not know what you are talking about. When he went out to the porch, another servant girl saw him, and she said to the bystanders, This man was with Jesus of Nazareth. Again, he denied it with an oath. I do not know the man. After a little while, the bystanders came up and said to Peter, Certainly you are also one of them, for your accent betrays you. Then he began to curse, and he swore an oath, I do not know the man. At that moment, the cock crowed, and Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the cock crows, you will deny me three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. The shadows lengthen. Lord, have mercy upon us. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child. Sometimes I feel like a motherless child.
The fifth lesson, Jesus is brought before Pilate. When morning came, all the chief priests and elders of the people conferred together against Jesus in order to bring about his death. They bound him, led him away, and handed, over to, handed him over to Pilate the governor. Now Jesus stood before the governor, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus said, You say so. But when he was accused by the chief priests and elders, he did not answer. Then Pilate said to him, Do you not hear how many accusations they make against you? But he gave him no answer, not even a single, not even to a single charge, so that the governor was greatly amazed. Now at the festival, the governor was accustomed to release a prisoner for the crowd, anyone whom they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Jesus Barabbas. So after they gathered, Pilate said to them, whom do you want me to release for you, Jesus Barabbas or Jesus who is called the Messiah? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that they had handed him over. While he was sitting on the judgment seat, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with that innocent man, for today I have suffered a great deal because of a dream about him. Now the chief priests and the elders persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and, have, and to have Jesus killed. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, Then what should I do with Jesus, who is called the Messiah? All of them said, Let him be crucified. Then he asked, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. So when Pilate saw that he could do nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took some water and washed his hands before the crowd, saying, I am, a, I am innocent of this man's blood. See it to yourselves. Then the people as a whole answered, His blood be on us and on our children. So he had released Barabbas before them. After a flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. And the shadows lengthen. Lord, have mercy upon us. The sixth lesson, Jesus is mocked. Then the soldiers of the governor took Jesus into the governor's headquarters, and they gathered the whole cohort around him. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and after twisting some thorns into a crown, they put it on his head. They put a reed in his right hand and knelt before him and mocked him, saying, Hail the King of Jews. They spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. After mocking him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him. Then 
They led him away to crucify him. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. The shadows lengthen. Christ, have mercy upon us. Seventh lesson, Jesus is crucified. And when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of skulls, they would not they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall, but when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his clothes among themselves by casting lots. They sat down and there there and kept watch over him. Over his head they put the charge against him, which read this is Jesus, the King of the Jews. Then two bandits were crucified with him, one on his right and one on his left. Those who passed derided him, shaking their heads and saying, You who would destroy the temple and would build it in three days, save yourself. If you are the Son of God, come down from the cross. And in the same way the chief priests also, along with the scribes and elders, were mocking him, saying, He saved others, he cannot save himself. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now, and we will believe in him. We trust in God. Let God deliver him now, if he wants to. For he said, I am God's son. The bandits who were crucified with him also taunted him in the same way. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. The shadows lengthen. Christ, have mercy upon us. Jesus dies. From noon on, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. That is, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, this man is calling on Elijah. 
At once, one of them ran and got a sponge filled with sour wine and put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink. But the others said, wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. Then Jesus cried again with a loud voice and breathed his last. At that moment, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs also were opened and many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. After his resurrection, they came out of the tombs and entered the holy city and were appeared to many. Now when the centurion and those with him who were keeping watch over Jesus saw the earthquake and what took place, they were terrified and said, truly this man was God's son. Many women were also there looking in from a distance. They had followed Jesus from Galilee and had provided for him. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of the sons of Zebedee. When it was evening, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who was also a disciple of Jesus. He went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate ordered it to be given to him. So Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and laid it in his own new tomb, which he had hewn in the rock. He then rolled a great stone to the door of the tomb and went away. Mary Magdalene and the other Mary were there, sitting opposite the tomb. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us.
you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? The light was coming into the world, and the darkness did not overcome it. Go in peace, and may Jesus Christ, who for our sake became obedient unto death, even death on the cross, keep you and strengthen you this night and forever. Amen. <laughs>